Patrick, yeah, what is, what does it take to get ready for a show like that? What, for, what, is for it, what, show? what does it take for you to get ready for a show like that with Lita Ford? You know, alcohol I mean? and hairspray. <laughs> <laughs> A lot's happened since yesterday. Yo, welcome to another edition of A Lot's Happened Since Yesterday. My name is Ralph Puso. And my name is allegedly Cody Walker. We'll figure it out. My <laughs> friends, I am super excited once again to have our friends from heaven below from the Iron Maidens, from Lita Ford, the amazing, the undeniable Nikki Stringfield, Patrick Kinnison. How are you, my friends? We're good. Awesome. We're happy. We're doing good amidst these crazy times. Yes. Well, that's... Dude, you guys are so freaking awesome. God, <laughs> I can't I can't tell you how much you guys keep all of us going. You know what I mean? I know that, you know what I mean? It, it, most people will be like, ah, well, you know, they're, they're just trying to stay relevant. But, dude, when you guys post stuff, it just kind of it, it inspires me. It does. You make me laugh, Patrick. You oh, make me you. laugh, I, I try to dude. Laugh. You know what I mean? And that's important in these times. So, yeah, you guys are more than just musicians in my eyes. So We're magicians. We're making magic. You're making magic. You guys are <laughs> magicians, not musicians. No, I think, sure. I think disappear in two oh. minutes. <laughs> it's true. It's all. It's true. It's actually not a truly. He's he's a uh, graduated. I'm not. Uh, yeah. <laughs> or onto pink lemonade vodka. You know, oh. man. <laughs> oh, dude, that's that's the that's the fancy schmancy, dude. Next thing oh, you know, you're gonna have dude. your pinky out. You have God, diamonds in the glass. You your pinky out. Oh, shit. No, that's funny. No, but you guys are, it's its pretty cool, man. You guys are inspiring. Um, how does it feel getting back on the road? So, so good. What was your first show back with the Maidens, with the pandemic? Do you remember what the first one was? Oh, uh, I don't know. We did a couple in Arizona. I think those were a couple of the first ones back Official. and they were still doing the um you know the social distance seating and everything right how was Probably. that was that weird it's always strange when people are seating seated at a show it feels you like know? a dinner crowd right it feels like a dinner crowd right. people go up to the front of the stage but they were having everybody sit down keeping it socially distanced but now it's it's all back to normal at most of these shows we've been playing we played m3 yeah. rock in the rivers festival and i mean People as far as the eye can see. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Rip. Our wow. leader show, first one back was uh, Sunglass, Pennsylvania. Does that sound right? Is that how you call it? I have no idea. It was a huge festival with all these 80s bands. And um, I got to say, it was the best thing about it. Lita was smart and had the entire band. We rehearsed right before the show. She said, you know, let's not play the show as if we haven't been rehearsing. Let's rehearse and make sure we play and sound good. Yeah. So we did in that show, all the other bands, even the headliners were, were on the side of the stage and said we were amazing and so great. Um, and it's because we rehearsed, you know, even Lita Ford all these years later, she doesn't say I'm Lita Ford. I'm just going to go kick ass. No, we rehearsed. And yeah, uh, right. for our first show back. Right on. Ran some songs in sound check. <laughs> hey, that's rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> Sound check, so, closing up. It's like a dress from, rehearsal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick, yeah, what, is, what does it take to get ready for a show like that? What, for a, what, is for it, a, what, what does it take for you to get ready for a show like that with Lita Ford? You know, alcohol you and hairspray. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, dude, I, no, I, I don't mean to. I don't mean to throw you under the bus, Nikki. But the look you just shot him was so brilliant. <laughs> like what? Like baby oil and all this other stuff. No, honestly, <laughs> you know, I'm telling your secrets right that's now. My secret. Um, he, he that's my secret. Glitter. He's secret. Maybe actually, with the Lita Ford gig, she is such a fucking badass that no matter what day she's had or what's going on personally for her. As soon as we're in the dressing room and everything, she's already pumped up talking about the set, 
talking about what, what how we could do this one thing, you know, talking really? about I, I, the sound guy. So th- I'm not going to sit back and go, okay, now I'm going to get ready. No, I'm pumped too, just because she's already ready to go. Well, I, yeah. I know you're a professional, so you 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 know what I mean. You've been doing this for years, and 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 you know you've got your shit down. But I know at the same time you want to have some fun. You know what I mean? It's that's what yeah. it's all about at the end of the day, right? For musicians, you're gonna have some fun. You know what I mean? So uh, I just want to know what what do you have like a regimen that you get uh, when you get ready to hit that stage? Yeah, there's a, uh, there's, I- I'm not going to use the word prayer. There's a, re- <laughs> I'm not going to use that word, but Bobby Rock, you know, muscle, big, badass Bobby Rock. We do a huddle like a, a sports team and uh-huh. he leaves some words, you know, that, that are inspiring about how the crowd is waiting to get their ass kicked. They don't care that we had delayed flights and that the hotel sucks and that the driver didn't know how to get to the gig. They just want to get their ass kicked. He'll say something inspirational, and we do a, a, a soul alignment, he calls it, for 30 seconds, and we focus our energies. He'll say things like 150 years experience between these four people on stage. <laughs> and then I and then I start doing the math. Well, shit, I've been playing. He's right. It's 150 years experience <laughs> between me, Bobby, Lita, and Marty. And um, that is for sure what sets the focus when, when we take the stage with Lita, you, you can't go out there after he does that and suck. You're like, oh, you're a football team. It really yeah. is. It's like a soccer team. You can't go out there and <laughs> suck afterwards. That's yeah. Funny. Nikki, what's been going on with you? God, just touring so much. I think uh, we have shows every weekend up and up through October. We're doing a couple Texas shows this weekend and then. We just got a really cool show booked for next week that we haven't been able to announce yet. We just confirmed it today, but that one's going to be really cool. And we're out for like the next week doing Ohio and the East Coast. We're just kind of just so much touring. It's hard to really get anything else done. So that's where that's where the action is. Right. The Midwest. Right. You know what I mean? East Coast, Midwest. Would you guys agree that that California is not really doing anything right now uh, what, what, i was what gonna ask that about? yeah yeah good what question Ralph. about the california well california thing? doesn't pay very well anyway even before the pandemic <laughs> <laughs> that's true that's true <laughs> yeah come on man exposure <laughs> yeah exposure come cook. Yeah, yeah come yeah. cook all your food at my house to expose my guests <laughs> to how good it tastes <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah because yeah, i noticed like because I, I was watching and i'm like i knew it was hard enough for bands here before covid but then all of this shit happened. I noticed things started. But in fact, I missed Patrick. I missed you by a week when you guys were out in Kentucky. I was out the following weekend. So pissed. But I noticed everything's normal. Like Nikki said, she's out fucking every weekend. I even called Ralph when I was out there. I'm like, dude, they're fucking us out here. Like, there's nothing we can do. And then I Is noticed. It, already live in a bubble already before this with California. It's the bubble even got smaller. Yeah, exactly. Um, right. Because then I noticed. Um. Nikki Maidens had had a whiskey show planned. You guys pushed it to October. I know yeah. I know Mammoth did the same thing just recently. And I was like, oh no, is it that bad? Like, what does the yeah. industry think out here now? I hope, I hope not. We were supposed to do the whiskey and a show in San Diego in October. And I think those have been bumped back for like the third or fourth time. Oh my oh, gosh. Wow. And you guys are just holding off for the for the restrictions to lighten up or what what's um I'm honest, I guess. I'm yeah. I'm not sure agents have just been like okay well we're rebooking all right well yeah so i know the first couple of times it was definitely the restrictions um i don't know why we didn't play the most recent time but hopefully october sticks yeah it'd be yeah. nice local shows for once yes <laughs> absolutely how do you guys juggle your schedules because you guys are you guys are so busy you guys have so much going on how do you juggle? we have we have dry erase boards yeah. everywhere in our iphones synced up honestly <laughs> And we'll say, look at this right here. This week, you know, we could be on Ralph and Cody's show or this day. <laughs> well, no, because you guys are on it, man. You yeah. guys are on top of it. You yeah, you're fucking everywhere. Professional. And, it was and, and, August. Yeah. August or, no, it was July because it was uh, M3. And I looked at my calendar and I'm like, you know, because I have my animals and everything. I have to work out and make sure they're okay. And I'm like, uh, God, we're not going to see each other 
until the very, it was about a month because he would get home. And then I had just left a couple of days before, or he'd get home and, or I'd get home and he just left. It was like, that's the secret to totally us. We don't, just... we don't, we don't, we don't get tired of each other. We're all yeah. working. Right. It's you just... guys, you guys are so beautiful. You guys are the beautiful Thank people, man. So you guys got engaged recently. How fucking awesome is that? What led up to that with you guys' busy schedules? And I know you guys have been together for a while, but what made you finally pop the question, dude? It's because we've each been out with awful people. We finally aren't awful. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we, no, uh, be honest. <laughs> we were friends first and, um, we were the friends that when we'd even go out with groups of people, her and I would end up always talking about music. And it wasn't each one of us acting like we were interested in each other. We were legitimately interested in what each other said. Imagine that. Can you imagine yeah, that? Yeah. And uh, it made a lot of sense by the time we we made it personal. We had a lot of chances to, and we just didn't. But I guess the damn usually... Yeah, I don't know. Didn't want to ruin our friendship. We hung yeah. out a lot. I knew, you know, I know how beautiful and funny I am, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, it was it was natural. It was definitely natural. It wasn't rushed, and um, yeah, it, it just it worked out. It, it it didn't. We didn't have to think about it. No, I had just. Uh... I had just gotten some flight vouchers. My drummer, Linda, and I decided to stay behind because they were giving out free travel vouchers. And we had been talking about how we wanted to go to Hawaii. And so I stayed behind and it was a hell of a day. We It, it was going to M3. And I think it took us literally all day to get there, almost 12 hours to finally get there. Oh. But I got our Hawaii flights covered. I'm like, hey, we're going to Hawaii. Flights are covered. Now we just, you know. And it was our two year anniversary of us yeah. getting together. So we just super last minute. I think we finished booking everything a week, like a less than a week before we decided to leave. It's like, let's just go because between our schedules, we're never going to get. And there was a series of Lita shows that fell through. And so yeah. I was saying, I was like, oh, my God, this actually works. Let's just do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> You guys are so awesome. <laughs> Thank you. It's so funny. What it's, it, it's fun watching you guys talk about it because it, it's it's very cool, man. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, it's very cool. Congratulations, guys. I, I, I'm 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 stoked. Uh, one of my favorite uh, rock and roll couples are getting married, and I, I think that's very fucking cool. You know, was man? it a plan? So, like, Nikki, you say we have Hawaii planned. Patrick, are you going? <laughs> fuck yeah! Now's the time, or was like, it like she's setting it up? Right. It was all perfect timing. Uh, you know, I'm the youngest of seven kids. My mom is almost 90 years old. You know, oh, my wow. mom, 40s. Uh, and so, you know, my family's like, wow, you really get along with this girl. Any marriage? I said, well, I said, actually, this would be the one that I would marry. None of those cuckoos that you met before would be the one. <laughs> this one. And um, my mom ended up saying, well, uh, before you buy a ring, I insist that the engagement ring is this one. And she hands me her ring from 1957 when Holy her and my dad got married. Are you serious? Can we get a look at? Oh my god! How freaking yeah. cool that's so is cool. That? So it's oh beautiful. my god. Yeah, my mom said you're you're the last. My mom said Mijo. My mom's Hispanic. She said Mijo, you're the last child. You're the seventh child, and I want it to to go full <laughs> circle. So here you go. And I was like, oh, my God. Yes, I am asking her to marry me. <laughs> oh, wow, dude. That is a freaking cool story, dude. Holy shit. I had no idea we were going to get that, dude. <laughs> that was fun. Dude, how amazing is that? So what? So what's the plan for the future? When are you guys getting married? Um, are you guys, you guys have a big, like, plan for a tour anytime soon? Other we got a lot of that. We, we promised ourselves we, we would be unlike our California friends who do engagements and then three and four years passes and five years <laughs> go drunk with somebody else. Yeah. Um, we said we're not we're not going to do that. So we're shooting to do a year from now. Yeah, looking at August or November of next year. It'll either be our anniversary of when we got together, August eighth, 
or it'll be my parents' anniversary of November 4th. My parents were married for 64 years, Damn. and we will get married parents' anniversary if our anniversary doesn't hit that date. Damn, that dude. Super cool. uh, we're looking. We're, yeah, we're, super cool. I, I never thought I was going to get married, so I'm like, I don't even know what I want or what to do, so I'm just <laughs> trying to, I'm getting married? What? So... And she's Did you non- see it coming? Huh? Did you see it coming? Were you like, no, you no, see. I did not. <laughs> oh no, my god! Holy shit! I had no oh. idea. I was like, what are you doing? Like, did you drop something? <laughs> did you have too much to drink? Always. <laughs> uh, but the good thing was, people afterward kept coming over and being like. Oh, We've been together for this many years. Can we get you guys a drink? They brought us shots. We barely walked back to our room so in that fancy hotel. Yeah. So that was yeah. nice. <laughs> so we got free dessert and shots. But Nikki's not a bridezilla, and she's not one of these girls that has this fairy tale wedding that they thought of when they were seven because she's actually like normal. And uh, that made it that much easier. <laughs> What's up with the coffin packages? I think those things are super fucking cool. Where where did you come up with that idea? That is when years ago, when Heaven Below first started, I thought I need to have a press kit that goes out to industry people that impresses them before they hear the opening of any song or see what anybody looks like. So I'd come up with this coffin idea. And I found a guy through eBay that sold wooden coffins for your candy at um, uh, Halloween. So I ordered one and I got it and I go, fuck, this thing looks cool. (laughs) I should do a photo shoot where we're dead inside and maybe there could be a a head stop. So all the ideas flowed through. And I reached out to the guy and said, hey, man, can you make it so a CD or a disc fits after I take the lid off right here? And he goes, yeah, I think so. And when he sent me one and the disc floated on there, I said, These, this is my kit right here. This is it. This is it. So we got a photographer. We all did our dead poses. We put the certificate in there, death certificate of authenticity. And they went out to all the radio stations that played When Daylight Dies. Um, and I think that helped us get airplay without payola money. People would see this coffin and go, what the this guy from Union Underground, you know, this is, you know, mid 2000s. And uh, finally, we decided, why don't we sell some of them? And we're like, fuck, they cost so much to make. A guy makes them out of real wood and all this. And then I laughed. I thought, nobody's going to pay $150 for this shit. And boy, was I wrong. People do pay $150 for this shit. Wow. That's so freaking cool. Man. No, the packaging what? is absolutely amazing on that thing. And what an it's awesome brilliant. idea yeah too. yeah yeah i agree with cody it's and you guys uh heaven below's got a show coming up in october we do in, out in san antonio um we're really excited about it it was on the books before the pandemic and then it got it got thrown out it got shifted or whatever and i told the promoter i said do you want us to give our the deposit back and she said she was offended she said fuck no you're gonna play my venue i said well yes of course yeah. And so, uh, yeah, we're doing that on October 10th, the night after or the night before I'll play with Lita in my hometown in the venue that I saw Lita Ford when I was 17. Oh, oh wow. God, dude. Oh, I have shit. the tickets. Um, I have it. Oh, still. wow. I had long Pearl Jam hair. I had the acne, <laughs> good pro face hair. You remember, you remember those <laughs> shredder guys? Like that was me. <laughs> so honestly, I just really have one last question for you guys. I, I, I hate to get, I don't want to get political, but I really do want to know what you guys think about the COVID situation right now. And I also want to know what you guys think about the Afghanistan situation right now. I want to know what you guys' thoughts are, because I think people that love musicians, they, they appreciate what they have to say. You know what I mean? So I want to, I want to hear what you guys think about that stuff. Let me pre- let me preface it because it's touchy situation. Yeah. It is touchy. Nikki and I are from Texas. We have big families. Mm-hmm. Our families are divided, just like the people in our country are. We have people that are very left. We have people that are very right. I think I can say clearly that we are not on either of those extremes, not because we're trying to fit in somewhere. 
It's just that I can't get behind conspiracy theories and I can also not get behind feeding paranoia. My brain doesn't work like that. So that being said, we just want people to be safe and make it about the music, right? Yeah. I mean, especially, especially since I've gone kind of all over the country, as you have, we've seen the, you know, how people live in different places, obviously in California, we're in this little bubble. Mm -hmm. And until a lot of people that I know here that haven't gone outside of California kind of have no idea how it's kind of just almost like COVID doesn't exist in other parts of the countries. Or when I go to other parts of the country and I'm wearing my mask, because hello, if any of us was to get COVID, all of our shows have to stop. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're not doing meet and greets right now. And, you know, we are trying to be safe and people will look at you if you're wearing a mask be like, why the hell are you wearing a mask? Overall, it just sucks. I just wish things would get back to normal, you know, and there's, it's nice to feel a bit of normalcy, but I think it's far from that still. We're not very political. This is as political. I hate politics. Me too. I I, I will say this. Same. I did not put my love or my trust in any president before Trump or after Trump. Mm -hmm. I feel as an American, those are puppets in the window, whether it's Obama or Mr. Clinton or Reagan. Those are puppets in the window. Those men have never helped me achieve anything musically. I wouldn't expect them to. So for people to take sides and love a puppet in the window, that doesn't work for me. I don't do puppets in windows. That's so fucking cool, dude. That makes sense. That's that's a fucking really cool way to- I'm not trying to be Rage Against the Machine or Willie Nelson, but no puppets in the window over here. (laughs) Well, like you said, I think you said it best. It's like, why can't can't we just make it about hanging out and being groovy and make it about the fucking music? I told my, I was, I was in, like I said, the first time I was out of California and I can't remember when I was in Kentucky, I was on the phone with him saying the same stuff. I was like, my God, man, it's normal here. Like everybody's too scared in California. I'm not saying who's right or wrong, but there is normalcy and it it bothered me coming home. I know it was like, oh, we got to come home. I think we came home. I, we were playing on our last run in the Midwest and that was right when California did the mask mandate again inside right. or whatever. We had like, what, a week or two of no masks inside here in California. And then we're like, well, let's enjoy it before we go home and and put on the masks again. But even here in California, we get both sides. People in Huntington Beach pretend there's no virus. That's true. That's crazy to me. <laughs> we have. We couldn't believe it. We, we couldn't in, believe we're it. Like, we're like, this oh, is weird. This is California right now. <laughs> but then we have friends that won't leave their houses and will only talk to you from the balcony with the mask. I can do that. Here. And that, you know, that, that of all of it is what's heartbreaking to me because I don't yeah. believe they should be that scared. Like, be safe. Absolutely right. stay healthy. Yeah. But yeah. Right, like, exactly. I don't think fear mongering is the way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I don't think nope. it is. But um, Common sense. Not. I tell people, Nikki and I don't do reckless behavior. We don't do paranoid behavior. No. So if we don't fit into a box from either side, Thank you. Well, I've been an outcast for most of my life. I'll continue to do that from the left or the right. Yeah. Fuck yeah, you guys have a good balance, man. That's so that's so awesome to hear. Uh, congratulations, guys. Um, we love you. We love you guys. We, we appreciate having you on. J- guys, check out Heaven Below. You got to check them out. Patrick and Nikki, they're doing so much stuff on the side. You got to check them out and see what they're doing. Uh, make sure to support them because they are amazing musicians and they are making our life a lot more fun. You know what I mean? So there, there it is. Thanks yeah. guys. Thanks, you tr- guys, you guys truly out. are both. Both of you are two of our favorite guests on this show. Yes. You guys are welcome you guys back are any awesome. fucking time. Yeah. We love both yeah. of you. Thank you for coming on guys. So, Cheers guys. We Cheers brothers. Time, man. Cheers, Cheers bro. sister. Cheers bro. I, I I hope I'm glad that you guys are doing well and congratulations on your engagement. Oh, one last you. thing. I want to see the coffin ring. Yes, let's do the coffin ring. Coffin ring. That up. Boom. Yeah. Oh, I know I had somebody asked at the other show, where's your coffin ring? <laughs> <laughs> it was a great Thank idea, you. dude. Yeah. Thank you. 
All right, guys. We'll let you go. Yep. Uh, love you love guys. You guys. We'll, we'll talk to you guys soon, okay? Hell yeah. Thank, All right. Thanks for doing this again. We'll push this Anytime. one hard. All right, brother. All right, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you go check out Patrick Kinnison with Heaven Below and with Lita Ford. Make sure you go check out Nikki Stringfield with the Iron Maidens and also with Heaven Below. They really are two of our most favorite people in the world. I, I, I've met them just through this show and by far two of the coolest, most down to earth, amazing people. Please go support them. They deserve Love them. All of go it. support them. Go support them. Support, support, support. They deserve your support. And ladies and gentlemen, speaking of which, we would appreciate if you guys like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. It, Absolutely. It, it's just going to help us to continue doing what we do. And that's all we ask for. It helps you know us grow. I mean? It helps yeah. us grow. And we it are. I've been looking grow. at demographics, people. We're starting to go worldwide. Shout out to Australia. There's mm -hmm. legit. You know what? I'm going to call you out, brother. There's one of you right now. In my demographic, we got one person in Australia. So you, I love you, man. Hit us up because you're the one Australian dude. So if you're from Australia and you listen to this show, email us. Because that's fucking awesome. I love it, dude. We're, we're, we're reaching out to the far. I've seen Germany. I've seen Spain, Switzerland. California, of course, America, all over the fucking place, Canada. You guys are amazing. The support is overwhelming. Let's keep it going because you guys are great. But until then, take care of yourselves. Be good humans. Always fucking forward. Peace. Let's stay together.